Good morning. Welcome to everything you wanted to know about Scratch Orgs, what we're afraid to ask. My name is Troy Sorensen. I'm a senior engineer on the Signup and ISV tools team. And among many other things, my team owns the code that signs up all orgs across all of Salesforce, including Scratch Orgs. Many of the things that I'll be talking about today were actively developed by myself and my team, and by golly, we are excited to share this with you. But before we get too far into here, while Salesforce DX is in, is in GA, I will be making references to things that are either in pilot or beta. Please do not make purchasing decisions based on what you see in this presentation. Do your due diligence and look up things on salesforce.com. With that out of the way, this presentation will be quickly going over what are scratch orgs, why did we create them, what, are, what is their purpose in life, how do they work, how you can take advantage of them, what you can do with them, and finally, how you, our lovely customers, can get your hand on Scratchworks today. But before I go too much further, let me get a feel for my audience. How many of you own an org, any kind of org, developer, production, something? Cool. How about two orgs? Three? Five? Ten? Fifty? I got a CLI I can sell you. Okay, now, how many of you got your orgs for development purposes? How many of you are admins of these orgs? How many of you just really like having a bunch of orgs? Okay. So what we see is a lot of people are, are getting their orgs in a lot of different ways for a lot of different purposes, and we want to support all of you by being as flexible as possible. So we created Scratch Orgs. Scratch orgs are ephemeral. They are going to be created and destroyed really, really quickly. To help with this, we made them as convenient as possible. When you want a scratch org, you can get one within seconds of the create request. And when you get it, it's going to be completely devoid of any data, metadata, or anything else that may get in your way of your experimentation, your development. Start you with a clean slate, ground zero. But sometimes you need some stuff in there because you're developing against features or preferences. We make scratch orgs highly configurable. You can create scratch orgs in amazing different flavors, and we'll be showing that a little bit later in a demo. And once you're done with that scratch org, you're done with your development, you've done your experiment, they're disposable. I'll go into a bit more details of why scratch orgs are disposable and why you will want to dis uh, dispose of them. But don't just take my word for it. Let me actually show you how great Salesforce DX is in Scratch Orgs. Here I have a terminal where I have previously installed the Salesforce DX command line interface, also known as the Salesforce CLI. If I run the SFDX force command, we see a nice, happy Salesforce DX cloud. If at any time we are curious about what commands we can do, we can always just uh, pass in the dash dash help command, if I can type correctly, and we'll see all the different commands that we have access to. As we can see, we have a lot of different subcommands. If we were to be curious about what those subcommands do, same way, we'll just uh, type in the dash dash help, get a list of subcommands. And once we get down to a bottom, we can actually see all the different flags that this command can do. So if I run the SFDX force org list, we'll see all the different orgs that my CLI has been authenticated into. In this case, it's none. And for all intents and purposes, this is a fresh install of the command line interface. There's nothing, no connections whatsoever. If I want to create scratch orgs, I need to connect my CLI to a dev hub. To do that, I'm going to use the SFDX force auth web login command. I'm going to st set the alias as a dev hub. This is just to make a nice human readable format. If I'm going to use the CLI to refer to many orgs, I can say dev hub and it will be this org. I'm also going to set the default set default dev hub username. The CLI can connect to many different orgs, not just dev hubs, not just scratch orgs, but also production, sandbox, what have you. By setting this as my default dev hub, if I were to create a scratch org, it would be created using this dev hub to do it. By running this command, you see I am brought to a very familiar login page. I'm just going to log in like I do every day. And we'll see that I am being requested to allow access to the CLI. This is to let the CLI communicate with my dev hub through APIs. After I hit allow, we're brought to our page, and I can actually close out of this org right now. I no longer need access to it. 
But before I go, I mentioned that this is a dev hub. Let me show you what this dev hub, what makes this a dev hub. In your production org, your enterprise unlimited performance edition, you can just go to the setup menu, do a quick search for dev hub, and you'll see at the very top here, I have previously enabled the dev hub functionality. The dev hub is going to be my manager of scratch orgs. This is why I needed to have a dev hub and connect it to the CLI. Cool. So if I run the SFDX force org list command, we'll see I have actually authenticated into my dev hub using the CLI. We have a big D for this is my default dev hub, the alias I assigned it, the username I use to log in, the org ID, and the fact that the CLI can, in fact, connect to it. Awesome. I can now go ahead and create my scratch orgs. To create a scratch org, you need to specify a definition file, a scratch org definition file. Thankfully, I have a very simple one here where I made a scratch org definition file about as simple as I can make it. I have specified the org name as Salesforce DX Company, and I want this scratch org to be a developer edition. No bells and whistles, I just want a developer scratch org. To create, I'm going to use the force org create command. I'm going to pass in the definition file of my config. And I'm also going to, in the same way uh, that I used in my previous command, set an alias as simple scratch, as an example. At this time, the CLI is making an API callout to my dev hub. The dev hub is creating a scratch org info object that's very similar to an account or an opportunity, except for that when you save a scratch org info object in the background, it will go out create a scratch org, get the response of that scratch org, update the dev hub, and then the dev hub itself will update the CLI. Usually in this demo, that has already completed by now and we'll be continue, but for unobvious reasons, create is still taking a bit long. Uh, because of the way that we create these scratch orgs, they are all empty of metadata or data, we can usually just create large pools of scratch orgs and then when a request comes in, we can allot them as needed. Um, however, due to the popularity of Salesforce DX, we have been seeing times where that pool has actually been depleted faster than we can create additional ones. I'll give this a few more seconds. How's everyone's morning going? Gotta love demos. So, at this time, normally Scratch Org's kind of will actually take up in a matter of seconds through the entire process that I had actually explained usually takes longer than the actual create. At that point, I can run the list command and see that I had actually created a Scratch Org and I could use the force org open, which I will show once this has actually completed. And I can actually open up a browser into that scratch org so I can immediately start experimenting, developing whatever that I want. But it's also really cool about the SFDX command line interface is that force org open command that I just would have showed you can actually open any org that has been authenticated, that it has authenticated into without needing the login credentials. It has saved off the refresh token and an encrypted file on your local machine. So just by authentic authenticating once with the CLI, I can now use the CLI to open up any of the orgs without needing to actually remember those login credentials. So what we saw and would have seen is you saw me authenticate into my dev hub using the force auth web command. You saw me list out what orgs my CLI was authenticated into. You saw me create a scratch org that typically takes only a few seconds, though occasionally you might run into a lengthier time. And you would have also seen me open up that scratch org. I did mention that scratch orgs are really, really configurable. We want to be able to support as many use cases as possible. So in that regard, we let you create scratch orgs for enterprise, developer, group, or professional edition as well as letting you set what features or even preferences you want enabled within that scratch org. So if you wanted to say try person accounts without actually turning it on in your production org, you can create a scratch org with that feature enabled and see what it does. Or see how it works with your development process. Make sure that your code, your hooks, your switches can de properly detect it and compensate for it. 
What I have on this slide is actually just a small subsampling of all the features and preferences that we have. We have a complete document written by our wonderful tech writers completely listing out all of the different features and preferences that Scratchworks support. And that list keeps growing as more and more teams add their support for Scratchworks. Let me show you a little bit more of that. So I have another Scratchwork definition file. It's a little bit more comprehensive than what I had earlier. If you There we go. OK. So here I have another scratch org definition file. It's a little bit more comprehensive than what we saw before. We see that I have, and if it's scrolled down, you see nothing here. We see that I want this scratch org to be created as an enterprise edition scratch org. We see that I provide a list of features that I want enabled within the scratch org, such as person accounts. I also want access to the service console, which is through the sales wave. And I want this scratch org to have access to custom apps, be able to create them. I can also specify what org preferences I want turned on or off in the scratch org. In this case, I want chatter, and I want lightning and translation to be off in my scratch org. This is just to make sure that maybe my app should properly detect that lightning isn't there, and I should not be trying to render lightning stuff. So I will use the exact same command that I did before using the force org create, and I'll just pass in my own feature-rich config file. I'll also use the set default username. In my previous example, I used the alias so that I can refer to that scratch org by the alias. But if I'm going to be doing developing, I'm probably going to be using the scratch org over and over and over again. It would be tiresome to keep specifying that. By, set the d by using the set default username, if I run a command without specifying what org, it's going to be run against this scratch org. I will also set a duration days. So earlier, I mentioned that uh, scratch orgs are disposable. This is because scratch orgs have an expiration date assigned to them. By default, after seven days of creation, Salesforce will clean up these scratch orgs for you. You can absolutely clean them up earlier, and I will show you later. Hopefully, a creation will be successful, and I can actually show you the delete process. Uh, but in the event that seven days isn't long enough or it's too long, we also let you use the duration days to say how long you want your scratch org to exist. Uh, we will support anywhere between one day because you have a CI process and you want the scratch work to be very short-lived, up to 30 days. Anywhere in between is a uh, valid day. So I will set one for my duration days. And in the same way that before happened before, the CLI will make an API call out to my dev hub. The dev hub will create a scratch work info object. And we finally have a successful create. If I run the force org list command, we can see that an additional row has been added to my uh, list. So up here, we have my dev hub that I showed earlier. Below, we see all the list of all the scratch orgs that I have created and authenticated into in this CLI. We have a U for my default username. This is my default username org. There is no alias because I didn't specify an alias. We see the org name I specified in my scratch org definition file. We see a very long randomly generated username because usernames need to be unique. We will take care of that for you. Um, if I do not set an alias on a scratch org, I need to refer to it using the username, which is why aliases are such a fantastic invention. We also see we have an org ID and that there's an expiration date that is tomorrow. This scratch org will be cleaned up at the end of tomorrow. So I've created a scratch org. Normally, I would have created a few. Next popular question is, how many scratch orgs can I create? Well, I can run the limits command against my dev hub, because the dev hub is my manager of my scratch orgs. And we can see all the different limits that my dev hub has. At the very top, we'll see an active scratch org limit, where I have a maximum active scratch org limit of 10,000. Do not get excited. 10,000 is very abnormal. Most editions will have anywhere between 20 or 100 active scratch orgs, where they can have that many scratch orgs at any given time. Down below, we'll also see a daily scratch org limit. This is a rolling 24 hours where we will limit how many scratch orgs you'll create within a 24 hour period. We keep limits uh, for scratch orgs because you're going to be using these scratch orgs in the same environments that other people will be using. And we don't want just one bad apple to create 50,000 scratch orgs on a single instance, completely bringing it down. 
So unfortunately, we do need to apply limits to scratch orgs. If I were to run the SFDX force or org open command, which I would have normally done, without specifying what org I wanted to do, I can. Uh, this will actually open up into the scratch org that I had just specified th uh, as the default username, and we'll see that I have been brought into a scratch org using the service console. In that scratch org definition file, I also said I want lightning turned off, and we do in fact actually see that turned off. If I go down to company profile, company information, we'll see this is actually the feature rich DX company of my scratch org. We'll see the organization edition is in fact the enterprise edition. And we'll also see that this scratch org exists on a sandbox instance. This is because the, our sandbox infrastructure is uniquely suited for the high volatility that scratch orgs represent. So I'm going to list out what orgs I have authenticated into again. And let's say I have completely maxed out my active scratch org limit. I need to create more scratch orgs, but I don't have any more, so I need to clean up what I have yesterday. To do that, I can run the SFDX force org delete command. If I run this without anything, even though I have a set default username there, it will not use that because we don't want you to accidentally delete your scratch orgs. We want you to be very specific and explicit on who you want to delete. So I'm going to use the SFDX force org delete with a target username and because I don't have an alias that I can use, I'm going to copy this long unwieldy username. We'll see that I am prompted. Are you absolutely sure you want to delete this scratch work? I'm going to hit yes. If I run list again, we'll see that scratch work has been removed from my list of scratch works. And if I were to run limits against my dev hub, we'll see that I was actually refunded that scratch work count. We'll also see that the daily scratch org count, like slightly below, is remains unchanged. This means I still created that scratch org within the last 24 hours. After that 24 hour period has rolled by, I will get that limit back. So what else did we see? We saw me use a more comprehensive create scenario where I could set a default username, used a much more comprehensive scratch org definition file, and set the expiration date of my scratch org. You also saw me list out the limits of how many scratch orgs I can create, how many I can, more I can create, how many I could delete, all that kind of stuff. And you saw me delete scratch orgs if I didn't want to wait for that natural expiration date to fly by. This is all well and good, but how can you take advantage of this? The very first step would be to go out and get the Salesforce CLI. Don't worry, it's really easy. Just doing a quick Google search for Salesforce DX CLI We'll find, I guarantee you, the very first non-advertisement link will be a download for it. We have installers for Windows, Mac, and even Linux, so we uh, provide as most, much support as we can for all popular operating systems. After you've downloaded the CLI, go hit the trail. Salesforce DX has a fantastic trailhead that lists out a lot more than what we just covered in this demo, a lot more about what Salesforce DX as a whole has to offer everybody. And finally, go ahead and turn on that dev hub setting that I showed you earlier within your production org, whether you're enterprise, unlimited, or performance. If you don't have access to one of those orgs, we also provide a free trial for dev hub, so you can get your hands on scratch orgs today. If you have more questions after this presentation, I'll be more than happy to answer it. But you can go visit us at the Salesforce DX booth under the uh, developer forest. Some other presentations I'd recommend you go see is getting started with Salesforce DX, as well as uh, creating scratch orgs from an org shape. While I showed you that you could create scratch orgs from a list of features and preferences, sometimes you want your scratch org to look like your production org, whatever that might be. Or maybe we just don't have the feature you have. We also are running a pilot right now where you can create a scratch org based on the shape of your production org. I have also included a link for the registration form so you can get access to that. And after Dreamforce has unfortunately ended, you still have questions, go look for us on the Salesforce DX group within the Trailblazer community, formerly known as the Success community. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, very much time to take up questions up here, but I'm more than happy to take, it out, uh, take questions after here, and there's gonna be a Salesforce DX Q&A over in the Sunset Campfire at 11 o'clock. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you for listening. Okay.